Welcome to History Through Games. It's a new show here on Trojan Vision where we're going to play some games and talk a little bit about the academics involved, inspired by uh, one of our players here, Dr. Scout Bloom, and our other player, uh, Dr. Scott Noakes, English professor, history professor, and we're here to play a game, uh, Dominion. Before we get into the game, uh, Scout, uh, this is all inspired by a class that you teach here where you play games and you teach lessons through history through the game. So uh, that's what got us here. But kind of tell us a little bit about the game we're playing here today, and then we'll talk a little about maybe some of the lessons later. So we're playing Dominion. Give us a little overview on Dominion. So. Okay. So we're playing a game called Dominion. It's a card game, a deck building game. And um, basically it's set in the Middle Ages. Um, the goal here, you have three different kinds of cards. Um, you have your victory cards, which are estate, duchy, and province cards. Um, they represent sort of land or estates. Um, you have um, treasure cards, copper, silver, and gold, so indicating wealth. And then you have ten kingdom cards here, which indicate sort of, from the game developer's perspective, different uh, aspects of um, life in the Middle Ages. So you've got there are, I'm not sure how many there are in the game total, but you get to pick which ones that you want uh, to play during the game. So the game has a lot of variety. Um, you know, you're not always playing with these, these ten decks of cards. You okay. could be playing with different ones okay. to have different aspects. Um, so the ones that we're playing with right now are the ones that the game recommends uh, for first-time players or beginning players. Which I am, by the way. This is the first time I've played it. And, and, and Scott's not I, sure if he's played this yeah, game before. I, so. I don't really remember the game, but I kind of remember the artwork from one card. There so that basically <laughs> makes me the game designer. Well, there you I, go. I, so I he knows so. the designer. I, I, I'm a complete novice. I've watched a video uh, on this, but, uh, but the whole purpose is to kind of teach me just like you'd be teaching your students. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the, the lessons involved here. And, and, and Scott here, uh, for everyone out there, we're talking about an, an English professor being with this, and we're talking about history. But uh, for those who don't know, Scott is a, is, is a kind of the Middle Ages expert uh, around here uh, and through English and literature, but uh, obviously you know a little bit about the, the time period and, and can add a little bit about that to what we're talking about here. I've heard so, about a couple things that happened, happened in, the, in the past, <laughs> right. Well, uh, I guess uh, should we should we go ahead and get started? Uh, do you want to get us started with uh, with playing the game and how do sure. how we how we get things started here? So. Okay, so let me just show you all a couple of things real quick. Okay. Um, when you're looking at the cards, I don't know if y'all can see this on the camera, if y'all are looking at the mm -hmm. cards, there's a, a number down here in the bottom left hand corner, there you go. and see. that's your cost mm -hmm. of the card. Um, the bottom also has what kind of card it is. So these are the victory cards. The object mm -hmm. is to get as many of these victory cards uh, as you can. So at the end of the game, you'll be counting up all of these points. So the points you see at the bottom is what we're going to see. These, so points, right these here. points here, that, right. that's what you're going to see. So, so hopefully getting enough of these points that will whoever gets the most will win the game. So, right. All right. And then, and then uh, <coughs> talk a little about, I guess, uh, what we're going to see some here. Okay. So here are the kingdom mm -hmm. cards, and it's the same thing down here. There's a cost in the bottom left-hand corner, and it tells you action. So it tells you what the card does. And then I don't, we'll kind of go over this in a minute when we start playing, but this tells you what you can do with the card itself. Okay. Okay. So, and, and it has different things um, that that uh, y you can do, we'll kind of go through this when we yeah, and the get cost, to Yeah, the cost, obviously buying it with the, the, the copper yes. and silver and gold yes. cards that we have Everybody right there, starts so. out with a um, set deck, the same deck, so you should have seven coppers and you should have three estates. Okay. Okay, so what I need y'all to do is to take those cards, put them all together, and then shuffle them up. All right. All right. And then deal yourself, face down, deal yourself five cards. All right. Um, Okay, and put your other cards. Scott is being very scientific. Well, really it's really shuffling to, his uh, cards. It's not easy to shuffle this. How yeah, many we just five? Uh, yes. Five cards. So. Face down or? Well, you can hold them in your hand, okay. but keep them secret. Don't let oh, them know. Oh, secret. So Although one, two, they'll know three, pretty soon. Four, five. Put you okay. And then these go in some sort of discard pile. This is our draw pile right here. This is the draw pile here. Okay. Here, okay and then on these your are the cards left. we can look at. Right. And your discard pile will be over here on your right. Okay. Now, the game discard pile is. <laughs> discard pile is a little bit of a misnomer in this game. You're not discarding them forever, you're just discarding them for the duration of your turn. Okay. So, 
Okay, who, who wants to go first? Um, uh, how about we look, uh, you, ladies first. How ladies about that? first, so. all right. Okay, so um, you're going to have three phases of things that you can do. Um, the first thing is to play an action card. None of us have action cards at the moment because these are the ones that are down here and we haven't gotten those yet. The next phase is the buy phase. So you can use your coppers, however many you manage to end up with in your hand, you can use your coppers to buy any one of these cards down here. You can buy a victory card whatever you want to purchase. And then the third phase is the cleanup phase where you basically sort of get ready for the next hand. You discard, discard. the cards that you have and kind of put them back together. All right. Okay. So I, and I'll just tell everybody what I ended up with so they can understand what we're doing. No, I ahead. ended up in my hand with two estate cards and three copper cards. So I've got three copper cards to play with. So I want to buy a, let's see. I'm going to buy a moat. What are you saying? You don't want to be around the rest of us? <laughs> <laughs> to, what does that mean? <laughs> Find a hidden away from the Yeah, nice. I, yeah. Um, now, okay. What does the moat? What does the moat do for you? Um, the moat allows me to pick up two extra cards in my hand, so that mm. I can have two more cards when I play that. Um, and on the, the card says, when another player plays an attack card, you may reveal this from your hand. If you do this, you are unaffected by that attack. Okay. So the moat, like a moat in a castle, protects you a little bit from attacks. And this goes into your, your, your discard pile, so you're not going to get that card until you... I can't you, do anything until, with until it. You right recycle, now. Until you recycle right. your card. So, so right now, so I've done my buy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in the um, cleanup phase, so I'm just going to put these cards right over here and then I'll deal myself another hand of five which is what I have left. All right. So this is my next hand. All right. So then I go into it now and so yes. now and I'll go ahead because I've got five copper in my hand wow. here. So uh, I can pretty much buy whatever I need to here. Now here's a question and we get here. Is it important more important for me to you to get the action cards or the 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 victory cards up here is this something that i want to work on early strategy wise or should i should i focus on getting the action cards and going from there um, so. to start with i would start with some of the action mm -hmm. cards if you're just building up your estates mm -hmm. um, right at first and land right at first then these cards really they don't have any if you have them in your hand, you they don't can't have any, do anything. They don't have any playable value right. in the yes. game. So. so they give you victory points, but you can't really do too much with them, and they might take up space where you could do something You might else. want to do that two or three rounds in when you've built up a few yes. more cards in your hand. Exactly. So, so then uh, kind of look around and see what you're... Uh, what I'm looking for here. So now when looking at some of these cards here, they say like plus three cards, uh, plus one card, one action, buy and buy, uh, plus one gold uh, or right. one copper there. So to me that with five coppers in my hand, that seems, the market seems like a, fa a fairly valuable card to be able to yes. get my hands on yes. right there. Because so. that gives you, um, it gives you extra cards in your hand mm -hmm. to hold. It gives you an extra action. So instead of just doing one action in your hand, you can do two mm -hmm. um, and it also, does it have it has another buy? It has a plus buy and yes. a plus and a plus a copper so there. So you can get so, a copper, right? So then, well then when I'll do that. Play. I will I will put that there and I will get me a the market right there and I just hold that in my hand at this point. Is all this in my hand or what do I now you do? Discard, you discard them, that? All, right. of, all of them. All right. That and one then too. the market goes and then, and then you, draw my next right. card. So and if you don't have be. enough in your in your um, hand in your pile over there, mm -hmm. you can shuffle the cards back together. Back and, there and do it from there. So yes. and that wraps up my turn there. Yes. So now we'll go to Scott. All right, so since you guys cheated, yeah, <laughs> and looked at the monitor and saw I already have five five <laughs> coppers. Um, I think since I don't actually know what these things do and how they function, I think I will use two copper to. And what do I do with the two copper when I do something? Put them down your, on your discard, discard pile, pile, which is uh, this side. Which is over this side. Okay. Put them in my discard pile to buy a cellar because there may be wine in this cellar. Uh -huh. And that is my understanding. Now, Good that's policy. not what the game says, though. According to this, it says it gives me plus one action. I can discard any number of cards and plus one card per card discarded. Oh, I see. So I can discard cards I don't want to get maybe cards I do want. Right. And then this goes into this hand or over here? Uh, the, into your hand that you're holding. There you go. Okay. And then put them all on the... Pile to your right. Okay, the discard pile. Correct. Okay. And then pick up the other. You need. You always need to have a uh, five cards in your hand when you gotcha. start your turn. Okay. 
All right, so we've gone through, gone through one round. Right. I'm going right. to pause just briefly here. Scout, tell me a little bit about some of the things that you that you teach through this game. What, what are some of the, the I guess, the, the lessons that, that come out of this game? So we kind of start off with a basic uh, overview of the medieval period, particularly the High Middle Ages, um, and we, you know, talk about some of the facets of culture and society at that point in time. Um, we're talking about um, feudalism, um, which I have learned from our resident medieval historian, uh, Dr. Jones. By the way, I'm a 20th century historian, <laughs> so I do America, so this is way out of my league. But one of the things that's real interesting with the Middle Ages is that terminology becomes real important. Um, and, you know, we have this idea of the Middle Ages as being knights and castles and, you know, rescuing damsels in distress. Um, and when we think about feudalism, but feudalism as a, as a concept or as a, a structure uh, didn't really exist. And what historians mean by that is that, you know, there was no one system of feudalism. There was no one way of doing this. Uh, it was pretty well developed in France, but uh, it was very different in different places and different places had different things, uh, ways of going about doing stuff. So there's not really a feudal system mm. in place. Um, but one of the things that's really interesting about this game is when we talk about feudalism, we, talks about, we talk about lords and vassals and serfs um, and what they owe to each other back and forth, and we can talk about that a little bit later. But land becomes very important uh, in the medieval period as a way of showing and distributing power. And so this is one of the things that we talk about with the game, you know, that the victory points are based on these on land. Um, so you do get a sense of, of this. Um, and you know wealth and stuff. Yeah, wealth and land, and so and, and, and Scott from this from this perspective, we have only played one round, but but you know she talks about the things that, that she's learned through this, but through literature, those same concepts kind of come across about about the different learning because a lot of times mm -hmm. they're they're only a lot of people's only idea of this era is through literature, through yeah. through the, the things they've studied, whether it's it's through high school literature or just to, through or reading film. through fun or right. film, you know. Right. And so it, it, does that kind of, uh, I guess, give the same kind of concept of, of, of had, sometimes people have a misunderstanding of that there's an overreaching economic and, and, and mm -hmm. political system that was in the Middle Ages. Well, as I, when students write papers for me, they, they'll often have the phrase, in the Middle Ages, yeah. such and such <laughs> is true. And we're talking about a thousand, thousand years, years. <laughs> uh, and it, even if we only limit it to Europe, you know, uh, as I tell them, almost almost any statement you can make is both completely true and completely <laughs> false. You know, so they'll say, oh, in the Middle Ages, women couldn't own property. Well, in this century, yeah. in this in this area, they couldn't. But in this other century, in this other area, absolutely they did. And they, <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, you know and, and so... Um, you, and so there's this kind of like uh, mythic Middle Ages that we have yeah. that that is this kind of amalgam of all these things. And this is where we get feudalism. And uh, that's not fair to say that. That's not the only place we get it from. Yeah. But, right? <laughs> but a lot of uh, like not just not just card games, but a lot of game designers, uh, you know, board games, card games, computer games. They tend to be drawn out of really three areas. Um, I have a good friend who's a game designer who's not from one of these three eras, so my apologies, Christy. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, they tend to be drawn out of the classics, uh, out of uh, medieval lit folks, and out of myth and folklore. Mm -hmm. uh, I th and so when you think about not just this game, I mean, this game could theoretically be themed anyway, you know. Uh, yeah. But we just naturally gravitate toward these sort of this kind of mythological Middle Ages. Yeah. And it's something that for some reason, whether it was, a, I don't know whether it was like something where early on a lot of people who are interested in those sorts of things went into went into the designing games, because we are pretty nerdy. Yeah. Uh, or uh, we get that, oh, right. like the Tolkien fan who, who exactly. ends up taking yes. all of that and putting it into Dungeons and Dragons that it ended up developing almost every role-playing game and fantasy game right. from that point on. Exactly. From the exactly. 70s. So. Or whether it started off that way or there's just something about it uh, that kind of draws in this idea of games. I actually think it's something about it. I think we're kind of familiar with it, but not familiar enough that we think that's not right. Right. Yeah. You know. Um, and and is, that, is that where a game like this can kind of come into play where you can point out, just like that you talked about there, that 
that's a misconception. You know, it's like you think that this is the way that there were knights in shining armor riding along the hillside, you know, and but that wasn't necessarily the case. Right. You know, and it, I think, too, what these games can do, uh, from my perspective, is to sort of get the students thinking about how the games are designed and what that says about us. I mean, if you think about this, we are playing as nobles, right? Mm -hmm. And we're nobles who are trying to get all this land. So why did the game designers decide to do that rather than have us be a peasant doing something, right? And, and you know, that can get you into a discussion of what are the differences between these two classes and mm -hmm. how does that sort of uh, inform us about the Middle Ages uh, as well. Um, I think you've got a little bit of that in the game. I mean, you do have some sort of worker kind of, who are 90% of the population, by the way, really at this point, oh, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got a woodcutter, smithy, um, you know, so there's some representation of that, but the fact that we are playing as a noble, you know, what does that sort of say well, about? Well, and not to mention that all of these elements would be if you were a landowner and you would need to be successful, you would need to be able to have a market. You need to have a, a smithy a workshop. You know, these are elements that, that if you didn't have some of this, your your uh, particular, you know, estate or province would probably fall to the wayside. You well, know? you're right. And not only that, but this is also sort of very reflective of the later Middle Ages. And I think mm -hmm. that's a lot of where we get our uh, ideas from because, you know, before about 1000, um, you know, castles were wooden and, you know, they were very small and they had, you know, <laughs> dug trenches and it wasn't a moat like we think of it. Mm -hmm. It's not really until about the 1200s that, and Scott, correct me please if I start, but um, if, you know, the 1200s are when we start to see castles more substantial like we, mm -hmm. we think of, which would be more, you know, in this kind of a... Uh, well, and the really substantial castles that we think of, the ones that, you know, you'll, you'll base a Disney uh, uh, princess's <laughs> home on, are were almost never used kind of really as, as sort of military fortifications. Mm -hmm. They were kind of way beyond a, a, the point of time where they're basically obsolete, but I want to show how powerful they yes, are. Yes, yes. This game also, what's interesting about it is if you look at the cards here, there's nothing cultural in it. It's all about what you can, it's all about money and maybe building. There's no reference to the church in it, you know. And... There is a deck with the church, oh, there but, is. Mm. but we're not playing with it. Okay. And, and that's a really good point, you know, that these decks kind of show up. But you're right, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of, of cultural stuff. Are there other kind of thematic decks like that? I don't know the direction. Should I go get the... Well, the, the, the uh, you know, I'm sure that, uh, I know there's expansions for the game. Right. And I know there you are get two into, different different expansions. expansions that you can get into it. I've, I've, okay. It, it, by right. I show research. I'd look I think, I think that, so. I could suggest some good expansions for the game. You know, <laughs> well, like that's a, one of the things more, I do with the more, kids is yeah, to have trolls. them say more There's trolls. Not trolls in this. <laughs> There's no bridge. Uh, yeah, no how do you have a moat without... Right. Yes, exactly. Okay, now so I'm here are the whole side. action cards. We have a cellar, a chapel, which brings the aspect of religion in. To me, that's never really brought in enough because mm -hmm. that was such a pivotal part of life. Mm -hmm. Chancellor, village, woodcutter, feast, militia, money lender, remodel, smithy, spy, thief, throne room, uh, council room, so some of the rooms that you might have in your castle as you develop, I guess, festival, laboratory, <laughs> library, <laughs> market, mine. There's also a witch, and there are curse cards in the game as well, which we're not playing with because we don't have anything that deals with them, and adventurer. So. Oh, well. So, yes. you, do, so you do get uh, a little culture, but you also get a little of the, the mythology in there if you introduce the witch in there. So, well, you know, but, you know. And the, and the adventurer. The adventurer. The adventurer. Uh, yeah. That's not a... Is that a degree offering we have? Uh, yeah, we, we will look into that as oh, soon yeah. as we get through with this. But let's let's uh, speaking of adventure, let's go to the next round. Let's, right. let's see if we can, uh, how we can progress here. So, okay. So I have. Should we say how many? Cards sure. We why have? not? We're here in the learning stages. We're in so the we learning can... stages. All right. I have four coppers and one estate is what well, I was left with. So I can buy something for up to four. I can't do an action still because I still don't have an action in my in my hand right now. I'm going to do, buy a militia. And what does Oops. the militia do? If you'll explain that to us real okay, quick. Okay, the militia we gives you two um, coins. You get two coppers when you um, play it, and it says um, it also hurts other players okay. when you play it. Each player has to discard down to three cards in his hand for that turn. All right. So this is called an action and attack card. So so you actually it, it can affect the other players on the board whenever you do that. Correct. So. All right. So then I'm going to discard and then. Aaron, right. while you're getting ready, I'm going to shuffle. Notice the first card you took was a moat. The second one you took was a militia. What do you think uh, I'm that, planning that's here? That's a little militant over here. <laughs> um, well, but, uh, okay, now at this point, in my hand, I've got my uh, two coppers. <laughs> 
with your wine. And right. three estates. Now, <laughs> when you get to this point for the estates, now these are in my hand. These count for victory points, Correct. but right now they're not doing me any good. Right. In fact, in they're this. kind of hurting you, right? Because yes. you can only mm -hmm. get the opportunity to have two coppers. So I have two coppers, but if I my two coppers, I can purchase uh one of the the items here either a cellar or a moat here and you can also if you want to you can purchase um this the uh, uh treasure cards okay. as well and that gives you more money m more money so but i'd have to have three coppers Correct. to get two silver okay right uh well i'm then, not an expert in investment or anything <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but at least you get the return right. back in there right. you know i mean it, somewhere maybe we'll get an economics professor in here someday who can explain that to us so uh but i guess i'm going to go with uh I uh, to defend myself over here, and I'm gonna get this moat as well uh, to get into my hand, just in case I've, you know, Somewhere. Mil the, the military yeah. over here starts attacking. You see so. what's happening over there. Yeah, so, all right, so these come in my hand, and that means I'm done with the estate, so everything goes into my discard pile. Right, and you're gonna shuffle, and shuffle that, that and get five while more Scott moves on to his, right. I'll shuffle up over uh, here. It's no big surprise this round to everyone <laughs> that, that I yeah. have three estates and two yeah. coffers. <laughs> Uh, and since I already got a, uh, since I already have a cellar, uh, uh, I'll take the moat. I'll, and, uh, I'll pass that. We all have too. moats all around. Now we have moats. Everyone has a moat. We are all we all have an isolationist policy. Yes, there we go. <laughs> right here. All, right, so all right, so here we go again. All right, now once you once you start getting your action cards, then you can play something during that phase. So I was very unlucky. I now have three estate cards in my hand, one copper, and my action card. So I'm going to play my militia. The only thing I can do. Sorry, guys. So instead now of y'all having five cards in your hand, you have to discard down to three. All right. So we got to get rid of two, two of our cards and put it in the dis uh, discard pile. So yes. uh, that's a draw pile. Sorry. There we go. All right. Uh, and then I get two coppers, right? I think. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay. And now, so that's the action phase. So now I'm done with that. So now I get to buy. I have three. I will buy a. What should I buy? Um, I will buy a workshop. All right. And I think that we leave the militia card out to remind everybody just for right now that I that think. That you're the attack? Yes. yes. That you are our enemy? Yes. I don't think I need reminding. <laughs> All right. So there you go. You've done yours, and now right, I go. have to. I have to, to play with just the three cards in my hand since Correct. you did the militia. So, but uh, luckily, I guess I've got three copper in my hand. So what I might do this round instead of an action card, I may buy another silver to give me a little bit more money to work with Very here. Good. So, and so there we go, and that goes into my discard pile, and then I'll draw five more. And now Scott. So every time. Aaron has had the exact same cards I have had, and every time he has done what I plan to do. I'm not going to do that. I will do, I'll buy something else with my three cards. Um, and I think I'll take a village. Village. Because. Oh, okay. right and what does a village do? We can see that right there. It's uh, a... It gives me plus one card and plus two actions. So I guess when I play it later on, I can hold an extra card in my hand and do two actions if I wish. Do I have to do two, or I can just do one? I don't think you have to do two. All right. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do, Scott. Oh. There I'll you go. see you all later. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Except finish oh. the show. So, all right. No, we do have to do that. Yeah. So, all right, now. All right, Let's so uh, I have a very good card. hand ended up with five coppers. So I will, what do I want to buy? I think I'm going to buy a market like Aaron did earlier. All right. All right, so we start with the action phase. So right. I can, so I played my market down. Okay, right. Which means so you can have. I get a one ca another card. So you can pick up another pick card. another card. I get another action. Right. I get another buy and another, so I have plus, plus one copper. Do I get a copper card there or do I want to, that or do I just have one to, in my bank to do that? So. I think you can pick, you pick a card you up. You pick a card up? Okay. So, all right. So Hopefully, I'm not up. mangling the rules. No, no, we'll, we'll, if, if so, someone someone will, will be able to say something about it later. So, uh, all right. So, uh, uh, so uh, one card in my hand and one action and one buy. So, I can, I can have two buys this time. Is that correct then? Because I have plus one buy on that for the market. Yeah, and you can play another action. Another action. So, so then I can do the moat. 
Now what gets confusing is if you play this one and this one has another action too. So then you can play another one and it gets kind of, so, there can be a uh, whole bunch of stuff. When another so, player plays an attack card, you may reveal this from your hand. Oh wait, but I don't want to do that now though, because that would, oh right. wait, but I, but, but I can get plus so two cards. If I though. were to play the militia card. I would play that. But right now I can play it and get two cards in my hand. Yes. Okay, which I only have one. So that does that mean I have to shuffle these and oh. go through here? Okay, so gotta shuffle these real quick. See, I'm taking the most time on this turn right here. Mm -hmm. So I shuffle these and then get one more card out of this. Bird dog us out here. Yeah. So, all right. So I have not made a buy yet. So, but I have five coppers in my hand and two estates in my hand. And remember, you can so, buy two things if you want to. Yes. Um, well, then I'm going to do, I'm going to buy another silver. And then with this, I'm going to, I'm going to get a village with three copper as well. And then those are my states that go into my discard. And then these don't affect anybody right now for this one. So I can, these just go back into my, my discard pile. All right, and Scott, how's right. your turn? So, I get three estate cards, which do me no good. One copper, which literally cannot buy anything, but I have a moat. So, I play the moat. You can get two more cards. I get two more cards, I'll put it that way. Get two more cards right here. Uh, do I still get to act this turn or no? Well, that was your action. That was, your, that was my action, so, so, so you can now buy I'm, now. Oh, so now I can buy. Yes. Okay, which... Uh, I will buy, I believe, and I will buy, I guess, I'll spend these two copper to buy a silver. There we go. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then all these go in here and I reshuffle. Oh wait, they're three. They cost three. Oh. Then I will not do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I you. was, I was fooling you. Yes. I two, instead... you can get another seller. I don't know if you can have, I think you can have more than one yeah. of the... Is there any uh, twos I don't have? Because that's basically all I got to go on here. A moat or a cellar. You can get an estate. Um, yeah, I don't want another estate. I will take... That should be your goal. Getting land. Being yes. land hungry. Eventually. I'll turn on you at the last minute. <laughs> no. I, will, uh, I will continue with my... Uh, cellar. My cellar. You're going to be yes. the winery. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I'm done with all these now. And I if guess. we start dwelling the... the that's right. <laughs> the winning victory comes from when we deplete. How many? How many of these uh, do we? Three piles have to be defeated, okay. or I mean, have to be depleted, mm. or all the province cards. Okay, all the province cards. Let's go away. Okay. See, I'm not sure how you play this game in 30 minutes, which is what we've been doing already. And yes. <laughs> well, you probably <laughs> no, stopped no, to talk about the rules a lot. Well, yeah. Yes, so. This is true. Maybe if you <clears throat> played right. it multiple times. All right. So for my action, I'm going to play my workshop card, which allows me to gain a card costing up to four. So I will get... You have a, either Militia, a remodel, Smithy, or Remodel. Or a smithy. Let's see. I will get the Smithy. Okay. And then, so for my buy phase, I have three. And I think that I am going to use that to get a silver. And then I'm done. All right. Uh, now to me, I've only got uh, money and an estate in my hand this time around. So I do not, cannot do an action, but I'm going to uh, purchase. I'm going to spend a copper and a silver and get another silver. And then with these two, I will get a seller right there. So there, and then my state isn't the other card in my hand, so that is it for me on that turn. Yeah. I am about to be very poor, so I'll spend all five of my Ooh. coins here and purchase a mine for long-term wealth, which it might do. And what does the what does What's the mine, the mine? do? Trash a treasure card from your hand. Does trash mean it doesn't go in the discard, but it moves from the game? Yes. It tra yeah, trash okay. leaves the game completely. Uh, so. Gain a treasure card, custom. Custing, costing up to three coins more in your hand. Okay. So I can throw one so away. So if you, if you throw a copper away, you can get something. You can get, yes. you get a silver. Right. If I throw a silver, silver away, you can get a gold. Because it'd be up to three. Three more, right? Three more. Right. So, but isn't the silver... I can't read that from way over here. Let's see. Yeah. It says, uh, 
gain a treasure card costing up to three more put in your hand. Yes. So I'll, every every one of these, so you can change in, you trade in a up. copper for right. silver, so silver, silver for one gold. More. So that seems like six and four. Oh, that that's cost three. That's yeah. three. Three, okay. three. Yes, that's so. right. They're inverted. Yeah, these, yeah. Those, these, those, are right. those got put upside down yeah, somehow. There so there we go. That was confusing. I got it. <laughs> well, and, and what does get a little confusing that you have to kind of keep track of is, like I was showing Aaron, if, you, if you're playing mm -hmm. cards that allow you to play multiple yes. things, mm -hmm. it's, it gets a little... All right, I have three coppers and two estates, so I have no action cards that I can play. Um, but I think I'm going to play my three coppers to buy another silver. And I am done. All right, so... My only action is a seller card, which allows me to have... Get wine from Scott. Yes, get, get wine from Scott, but it's plus one action and discard any number of cards, plus one card per card discarded. And I have no idea what that means right there. So, uh, discard any... Okay, um, so you can, if you in your hand, if you have like too many estates, Okay. you can put those estates down and you can get from your pile however many... That I discarded. That so want. okay. Well then, I'm gonna put that down there. Then and I'm gonna discard the estate card in my hand here. Okay. And then I'm going to draw another card in its place, which is another treasure. So, uh, so right now I have got. So what is that? Uh, it's five. So I have a silver and three copper. So that's five. So I'm going to. Uh, let's see. What do I want to go with again? Uh, the market did me so well last time. I think I'm going to get another market right there since I have five. Give the market, and then that would be the end of my turn. Scott? Okay. Um, I will... Um, I've got a variety of things I can do here. So because I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to behave wildly. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to play the seller card. This gives me one action. I can discard any number of cards, and I gain plus one card per card discarded. Right. And so... so in other words, you can just replace cards in your hand. Exactly. Basically. So I'm going to... I assume that card does not count toward that. So I'm going to <laughs> discard these two cards to pick up two more cards out of here. Right. Which are incredibly useful to me. What are they? <laughs> They're estate cards. They're two estate <laughs> cards. <laughs> are they what you put down mm -hmm. to begin with? So <laughs> I think I will take a, another. I am not doing well in this game. There's, I, I'm you trying don't to go, know yet. Well, I'm trying to go full dwarf here. I'm doing everything <laughs> underground I can. Oh, all uh, right. That's not an for any particular strategy. reason. But, um, well, I guess I will take another moat. Why not? Man can never have rings, enough moats. Rings yeah. and rings of moats. Yeah. No one can touch me. <laughs> Alrighty. Now, now, if I'm down to two cards in here. So you take those so cards, I just, I reshuffle, shuffle those, it. and take three from that pile. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I was wondering. Alrighty. Um, so, action phase, I'm going to play my market card. This allows me to pick up one more card, so I'll do that. It gives me one more action and plus another buy. And I get a copper. So for my other action that I'm going to do, I am going to play my militia card. So all of y'all have to drop down to three cards now for your next turn. Now, can, it, can I play the moat card now? Oh. And, and do, yes. That, and that immediately, so it does not affect me? Right. OK. Scott, so, are you gonna? Uh, well, I already. You had, didn't have I your guess, moat. Well, I guess I have to find out. Draw these, and then I guess I have to discard because I don't have a moat. So how many? I got to go down to three cards. Correct. All right, and. Um, and this, when I play it now, this is only the reaction okay. card. I don't get the action benefit from this. The the plus two cards, right? I just I, I think get it's the reaction. just defensive yeah. At, yeah. at the okay. moment. Okay. So um, the, the militia card gives me two more coins. So I now have. One, two, three, four, five, six. I am going to buy a, take five cards in my buy phase at first. Well, let's see, do I want to do that? I think that I will do that. I will buy a Ooh, She's buying some land, Dutchie. Scott. Uh, we'll and that will have to blue. end my turn because I cannot buy anything else with just one copper. Okay, there we go. All right, so it's my turn, and I'm going to start off by playing 
my market card, which gives me one more, one more card. card. And then I get another action and another buy and another copper. So I'll go ahead and draw my copper. Now I'm gonna, my next action is gonna be I'm gonna play the village. Now the village uh, gives me the opportunity, I get another card and, and then two more actions. Two more actions. Uh, sadly, I do not have any more actions available to me. So, but I do have a handful of cards right now. <laughs> so, uh, and even though I have the capability of doing another buy, I am probably only going to, uh, since I have five coppers in my hand, I'm going to uh, not let her get ahead of me over here with land, and I'm going to buy a duchy as well with Ooh. my five copper. So, and then that will end my turn. So, so there. So we're in real estate now. So you know. Well, all I have is a village. I'm told it takes one. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> so, and I there's your one, one village. Card, sir. Which uh, gives me th three copper. So, um, let me see, what do I want to do? Do I want to get more money? Well, I have a mine, and a mine, I assume, will eventually get me more money. Um, you can upgrade your money with that mine, so. Money. Yes, but also woodcutter will eventually give me money. So mm -hmm. I think since you're investing in violence, <laughs> and you're investing in mammon and filthy lucre. Yeah, there we go. I, as a virtuous person, will instead be a captain of industry and I will instead buy a, a, word, a wood cutter. I will purchase this person. This, there you go. So. All right, a wood cutter. So he will cut wood. Oh, wait, we got the... Uh, oh, that's... Oh, the, the workshop and wood cutter. Oh, what's the workshop over the there? The workshop... Uh -uh. Uh, gain a card costing up to four. Eh, I want to have a wood cutter. Then later okay. I'll give him okay. a place to work. Okay. So now does this stay here or yeah, this goes very here? Very scientific. It goes on the discard pile. Okay. okay. He's thinking a lot about this. And he is. Oh, well, well, I'm trying to. Yes. Being a little more random. Okay. Well, I see. So. I see your violent nature <laughs> coming out. Uh, all right. So I'm going to play my Smithy card, which gives me I can pick up three more cards. Ooh, and they are all treasure cards. So I now have up. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to play. I am going to spend six of these and get a gold. Gold. Oh, oh, man. She's building up her treasury. Got land and money over there. All right, and that's your turn, Scott? That's my All turn. Right. So I have got uh, two estates, which aren't going to do me any good, but I do have two silvers and a copper, which gives me five. And I'm going to uh, try to build my treasury up by buying a mine with that. Mm -hmm. And that does, that's my turn. So now over to Scott. Okay, so I'm going to, um, actually I need money. Uh, so uh, I've got a, uh, I've got a cop, I got three coppers, a moat and a cellar. Now I could play the cellar, discard the moat and get an additional card, but I want money and that'll only give me at most four coppers because I don't have any silvers yet. So that would not do me any good. So I'm just going to go ahead and spend the coppers to get myself a silver and call that a, call that a round. There we All go. Right. Okay. So that's my plan. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that I point out to the kids when we're playing is the absence of women in this game, which is, you know, interesting too. Um, and I get a lot of, you know, what Scott said that, you know, basically this sort of very standard women have no power and <laughs> women. You know. I think that's very sexist of you. The woodcutter <laughs> is non-gendered. Uh, well, so, now this is, uh, this know, is true. Uh, you know, uh, it could be uh, there's a, a militia. Could be a, an entire female militia. It could be or a smithy. Extraordinarily <laughs> unlikely, but <laughs> very, very, but, but possible. Um, you know, and, th and there were some very powerful women at this point in time who were playing this game just as well as the men were. Eleanor of Aquitaine, of course, who uh, you know married Louis at first, and then that marriage uh, was dissolved, and then she married Henry, and 
So ended up controlling more of France than the King of France was. So I think, you know, like Scott and I were mentioning, there's a lot of cultural aspects here that are that are missing yeah, the, from the well, game. But, but you can bring that up in talking about right. I mean, you you end up becoming Eleanor as you are you are you are picking <laughs> up all of these duchies and provinces. You know, you could you've got the land and you know, in a lot of cases, like in this game, land is power. Right. So you end up winning, so the more you get there. So Yep. Okay. So um, militia. Sorry, that's my only action card to play. Um, so you'll have to discard down to three. But I can play the moat. Oh, not very discard good. Down, right? Yes. All right, I now have five coppers to buy something with, and I believe that I will buy a mine. There you go. All right. All right, and so now it's to me, and with my depleted hand, thanks to yes. uh, Eleanor over here, um, <laughs> I'm going, I've only have four available to me, but uh, I, no one has gotten a remodel yet. So why don't I go oh, ahead and get idea. a remodel, and we'll talk a little about what a remodel does here. A remodel, uh, you trash a card from your hand and gain a card costing up to two more than the trash card. So basically it's like the mine it is a remodel. Right, for that, but you can yeah. upgrade to a, to a better card from there. So does it say any card or action uh, It card? says uh, it can gain a card, any, just gain a card costing up to two more than the trash card. So, so you, could, you could literally murder every person in your militia to get a market. There you go. You can <laughs> do that. So it, it, it's a distinct possibility there. So, all right, and that does, that's but that, my turn there. But that's so. trashing, not discarding, right? So whatever you're yes. getting rid of yeah, is something that's gone rid forever. Of it. You're trashing okay. it, so. Now, since I played the moat and was unaffected by your action, does that mean that I get, and that knocked me down by playing it, I knocked me down to four cards. Does that mean I actually get another card before I start this round or no? I think when I did it, I just was, I started with four cards. It just gives you an extra card. You, you're not to play. You're, to play. I, I, I mean, you just okay. get that four okay. card, so you're not down to three. It actually so. isn't going to affect what I'm going to do because I was going to play my mine uh, and then turn that copper into a silver. That was my plan. There you go. Very good. So I can be richer. There we go. All right. Um, I am going to play the market card, which means I get to pick up another card. Uh, I get an extra action, but I do not have any other actions, so, and I get plus one buy, so I get to buy twice if I so desire. Um, I only have four. Oh, let me interject real yes. quick. Uh, Scott, you get that, that mine trashes that treasure card you played, because I just picked one up in my oh. hand. So, right. so, the so one of your coppers needs to get trashed. So, yes, you I, need I, to have I, a trash what? pile. Yeah, so. There we go. So one of your coppers the gets trash trashed. So, there you go. All right, so. I just happened to draw it. I see it Spoiler alert, I have a mind card in my hand right now, <laughs> but I did read it. So I'm just trying to play by the rules. All so. right, all, all right. right. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. All right, I am going to buy, I believe, a smithy. Okay. So, Scott, what drew you to medieval literature? Why did you decide to study that? Uh, this will, I mean, this is very unusual and you wouldn't expect it, but I was. I was pretty nerdy as a child. I was pretty <laughs> geeky. That is, uh, you know, uh, surprising to most people, uh, yet true. Uh, and so I played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons uh, when I was really? a kid. Yes, and I I really enjoyed that game. And uh, and uh, you know, I played a lot of other kind of uh, tabletop role playing games. Um, and so I was aware that they didn't have to have this sort of uh, this kind of uh, theme to it, but um, nonetheless, I went into it, and, and I remember when I was a freshman, I had a professor who, she was teaching a class in Old English, uh, which she strong-armed me into signing up for, because I did not, I guess I wasn't against it, I just didn't. Didn't know what it was. Yes, I didn't think that was a thing that one did, uh, and so, um, so I did that, and uh, uh, took that class, and that was the first time I realized, you know, you could actually do this professionally. Uh, <laughs> and and I ended up, uh, through various circumstances, uh, ended up in this field. I actually started off uh, doing American lit uh, oh. in the early in the early days, um, and I kept doing the medieval thing until finally Someone the medievalist said, "Why are you? <laughs> why are you doing this? You have as many." 
in graduate school, I had as many medieval lit classes as I did American lit as an American lit specialist. And that was where things went wrong for me and I became <laughs> medievalist. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna play my cellar uh, and I'm gonna discard this estate uh, so that I get another card because I'm hoping for what I did get. Oh wait, hold on, my math is not good. I'm an English professor. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a history professor. Uh, we I don't know numbers not, either. Uh, yeah, I, not. It did not occur to me just now that that number equals five, not six, to purchase a gold. But for five, let me see what I will buy that will... Uh, you do have the option of getting the mine, which will help you get a gold if you want to someday. That's so. true. Uh, what does the market do? The that, market gives you pretty much everything. All sorts of things. It gives, gives you things. everything you can do. Right. You get an extra copper, you get to buy another, an extra thing, uh, you get an extra action. Uh, it's one of the most active cards, and that's interesting, you know, because obviously trade was really important during the medieval period, and it starts to be sort of, uh, you know, a much more important part of, of life. And right. it leads, obviously, it leads to other actions. Things happen in the market, right. you can buy other things, it leads to other things, so. That's true, but I think because for reasons of my own, I went with a dwarfy theme, I think I'm instead <laughs> going to You're waste one of my coppers that. and purchase a smithy. All right. So I may smith things. Now I noticed I said that uh, the other cards are not gendered. These are either women with some sort of problem, hormonal issue, or <laughs> they could be dwarf. Actually, women. even as men, they have hormonal. I mean, there th those are some. There are some facial hair on these long, guys. There you go, sir. Long facial hair. Yeah, yes, so. those guys. Manly men. Right. But if I'm not, I'm not mistaken, in, in many forms of literature, dwarves. Female dwarves have beards as well, so they're not—they're not known for their beauty. So you know, I can't think of a single. I'm yeah. sure there must be, but yeah, I can't so. think of a single example of a female dwarf in medieval literature. Yeah, I can only really? think of female dwarves. Yeah, and, and you know, in movies and things like that, you'll often see. You know, in, in, in popular culture, they'll talk about. You know, sometimes the dwarves are the female dwarves are, are not not attractive. You know, so. Uh, I've never met. I've never racist, met. That's uh, racist, and I'm offended. I, you know, <laughs> and I'm glad we have this on tape. Oh well, you know, if if I if I find a a, a mythical dwarf out there, female <laughs> mythical dwarf, you will let I, Scott I, I will know. let us. I'll let you know about right. it. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play my workshop, which allows me to gain a card costing up to four, and with that, I believe I'm going to get a silver, which costs three. three. All right. Um, so that's my action phase, buy phase. Now, does um, that silver get to go in your hand for for a buy at this point, no, or is that um, okay, so, okay? It goes into your discard. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? I think it goes in your hand because you okay. just you gained it to buy. Well, to there buy. we go. I would, I would assume it would. So. Um, so I now have five to spend. So I am going to buy a duchy. Mm. We are done. I am really behind on. All Dutch right, so, uh, so I like have that. a couple of estates in my hand, which doesn't going to be any good, but I've got to keep up with the real estate mogul over here. With my five, I'm going to buy another duchy as well. So I'm neck and neck with Scout over here. You so, know, you think that if you get more of the cards, you're going to get more of them in your hand, but that doesn't necessarily work out to be the case yes. because you're shuffling them all the time. So. Right. All right, so I have no money in my hand. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to play the village, which will give me plus one card and then two actions, if Very I recall, good. right? And the plus one card I got was an estate. So that <laughs> is extraordinarily helpful. In addition to the two estates, which are not helpful, I have a mine, which is completely unhelpful yes. when one has no other uh, money cards in their hand. So I do have a moat which I could get two more cards if I wanted. Uh, a seller, which allows me to get plus one action. I can discard any number of cards and get a uh, plus one card per card discarded. So you can well, discard your so estates. I can discard this, estates. Right, so I can discard the estates, and get two more, and then hopefully have a thing to do. <coughs> Aha, I have three oh big American dollars here. Uh, <laughs> so, um, let but if you, have a, if you have a silver, right. you can upgrade I am to a exactly going to do that. I'm going to use my mine to trash my silver and get a gold. Very good. I have gold. You have gold. So bow down All right. before <laughs> my gold. Uh, all righty. I'm going to play my militia card, 
Oh, I better Should see I if I get a moat moat here. Two, yeah, you should. Hold on, I'm gonna quickly shuffle. And I let's see. I now have five coppers to do something with. And I will. What do I want? I'm going to get another duchy. Mm. Now I'm going to play my moat, so that I'm affected by your militia. Very good. Oh wait, I forgot. Oh to yeah, play you need militia. to get rid of. I, I didn't get rid of a card, did I? Uh, I see so. how you are. Two cards. Two yes, cards. Two cards. So I will. Get you rid think of two just because you're a duke so. now? With oh yes, I know. I, know. I wasn't paying but attention. You don't have to so obey the rules. Not cool, dude. Not cool. All right. All. So now it's uh, my turn, and uh, well, at this point, I really have. Uh, well, actually, I have two coppers and a cellar. So I will buy another estate with my two coppers. <laughs> so, Tell me what the cellar does again. The cellar, the cellar uh, gives me an extra action, action, but I don't have an action card. And I can also discard any card to get a card. But uh, since I only had two cards in my hand, it doesn't really help me. I could have discarded a copper to get a copper. But in the long run, I can get a state. And that puts me one uh, you know, okay. victory card ahead of you in the at least the, the real estate category there. So All right. you know, if, I'm keep, if I'm doing the math right in my head. So, <laughs> so. OK, I got the woodcutter who is working with the Dwarven Kingdom. Yes. <laughs> We're not even a kingdom. We're just the. We're not even an estate. <laughs> we're just the the dwarves in our mine with our moat apparently drowning us. But I get plus one to buy, plus one buy, and plus two gold. I have four here, so I'm going to sell these, not trash, but sell these to get myself oh. a gold. Wow. Now I am wealthy beyond imagination. All right, I am going to play my mine card. And I need to trash a treasure card. This is a copper. So, and I can get a silver. Okay, and that will give me six um, uh, point picks money wise. No, I'm sorry, five. See, the counting. Mm -hmm. So I am going to. If we actually what? got a math professor in here, we would be. <laughs> yeah, they'd, 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 they'd just be playing the odds. Yeah, and well, well. We'd all be sitting here. With and I our, think I'm going to buy a mine. We'd just have hands full no. of moats. I'm going to buy a market. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So with me, I'm going to start things off with my market. It's the, I think it's the way to start every round. So you get an extra card, you get an extra action, an extra buy, and an extra copper so so now my next action will be I'm going to play my seller which gives me another action I'm chaining actions as you'll see here uh, and then I'm gonna discard Clever of you. yes discarding uh, this duchy and then adding a another card in my hand here uh, it also gives me another action so the action this action will be um, I'm going to put the remodel down for the next action on there. Um, so the next action, I'm going to trash a copper and then I can get up to two more. It's a zero, so only two, but then I'm gonna use it to buy another estate. So that copper is going to buy that estate. Now I'm in the buy mode, so I have- And you got two, you got an extra one. And I've got an extra, well, I've already picked up my extra one there. So, uh, so I already put that one in my hand. You're so, very active um, as a monarch. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, and let's see. Um, He's not one of those sit back and active. let things happen. All right, I'm going to take uh, spend three here and then get a workshop, which uh, allows me to uh, gain a card costing up to four whenever it plays the next time around. And then that will be my hand. Well, I got a seller and six gold. Ooh. So I'll be purchasing a gold, and making myself super rich. Wow. We we dwarves we found a special. Uh, there you go. Uh, your, we don't your we don't have mine. we don't have much power yet, but it's we gold mine. rest. We have a gold mine. You have a gold mine. Um, okay, I have one estate and I have five coppers. So I am going to. And I'll, I will say this: make this make this one count because I think this is going to be our last round. So we ah. are we are running low on time. Oh. So we are gonna, we're I'm gonna going to we're going to tally up after this then. one. <laughs> All right. 
So she does that. She bought a duchy. So that may have actually put her over the top here. So we will see. Um, all right, so now it is my turn, and I'm unfortunately, I only have four coppers and a state on my last round. I should have called it earlier. So, uh, so but, but with the four that I have here, um, now what all goes to the victory points? Now let me see. You want to talk about these. just those right there. So, so with these though, I can try to, I can do, I can buy two more estates here to go into my cards, and then that will wrap up my turn. So, Scott, let's make it count. Well, unlike you, I have been playing according to Arthurian virtues, really. <laughs> and I've been kind to those around me. Uh, again, unlike you hey, two. Neither one of y'all played a militia card. <laughs> neither one of you did. I don't think it's I even had a militia card. So. We are a peaceful nation. Yeah, that's what it was. So. Wow. so I will first play the seller, and I will discard these two estate cards, because what good are those going to do me right now? and pick up the two cards for those, which give me a mine, which is only good in the long term, and a smithy, which gives me plus three cards. But I don't believe I would gain an action. I think that would be my only action right, there, right? I don't right? think, yeah, right. you played your action. But you, but, so but you, have, a, you However, have an extra action right now there. I've got yes. that, which yes. will give me an additional card. And two actions. And two actions. Goodness sakes alive. So those two actions, one of those actions will be to play the smithy, and get three cards, of which I have one. I guess I gotta shuffle these up, right? Yeah. Come on, goals. <laughs> I need those goals. I'm, oops. I'm uh, shuffling reversed here. Everything's all messed up. Yes, this is it. The tension is high in the Dwarven Kingdom. Let's see if virtue pays off. I go ahead and start pulling. Random, and you said, and you said random only these are the ones that, right? that count, right? right. These, so. If there's a tie, though, that you go the to the one with the most treasure. All right, so, I'm so go ahead and start. one, two. All right. Well, Scott's over so there doing now, his stuff. Well, doing his mac I did not get the things I would need necessarily to do. So, um... I can, uh, all right, well, I don't have much I can do yet, so I will play the seller to get another action and another <laughs> card. Oh, wait, I gotta discard another card. He's just, he's just stringing this out of the wall. Right, See, that's, that's here, what so. starts to happen as you So get. I'll discard two cards. Actually, no one can attack me. Yeah, no one can attack so me. So I will, uh, I will get three cards here. One, two, three. Yeah, uh, well, not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> which gives me four, five, six, seven, which is not enough to buy a province, which is what well, I was shooting duchy. for. Uh, you, can you I buy one bocce? Uh, can I buy a duchy in two estates? Or uh, the duchy in one estate in yep. the same round? You can do that. Can, can, right. can you do that? The buy two in the same one? Or? Is I that, guess so. Uh, I'm well, not sure. Or is that uh, or it's one, one buy? buy. You, you only had, no, you didn't uh, get an extra buy yeah. in there. So. All right, so, so I guess all I can do is uh, buy a duchy for three. Buy a duchy. Or for five. And then I will pass the Dutch. And then that's it. To the left hand side. To the left hand side. So I'm, I'm glad you caught that, that reference. There, there we go. So. All right. So now let's uh, go through your cards. We kind of collected ours. And let's there see. Uh, get our, uh, this our is, land cards here. So this is going to be one, sad for me. Two, three estates, four estates, five estates, six, seven estates. Good Lord. And two duchies. So that's, and those, the point, mm. the points are on the front. Right? So seven. Uh, 10, 13 points uh, in land for, for me. I have 15 points. Oh! I have six points. Uh, oh! The dwarfs have the, the no. least points. Sad, you sad, know, sad. the dwarves are always getting the short end of the stick in medieval literature. <laughs> They're always evil, the harbingers the of doom. Yes, and so once again, we've been oppressed. Yes, well, uh, it was a good game, a fun game, game, and definitely educational and entertaining, to say the least. Uh, thank you both for joining us uh, for this game of Dominion, and uh, we'll uh, bring Scout back, and uh, with hopefully a, a, another guest professor, maybe we'll get Scott to come back again, and we'll talk I a little about some games, huh? so, uh, and learn a little history through games. Uh, thank you both, and uh, good game, and enjoyed it. And thank you for joining us, and hope you enjoyed playing the game, and uh, join us next time for whatever game Scout decides to bring.